the Devils. Jay Dahl back with another goddamn video. In today's video, we're going to be going over. Brought it up. Didn't even look at it. Figured out which one was next in line. Just brought it to the top. We're on video. Is metal YouTuber Kevin Frazier natural? No, no riff stinky. What is this? No riff stinky as L Black metal. 1.7K fucking views. Fuck yeah. Three weeks ago, so 3K would be better, but we're in the thousands, goddammit. Told you, devils, I want every fucking video at 1,000 plus. Comments 132, so there's potentially some good shit in here. So let's get fucking di get digging, devils. Get your goddamn shovels. And for whatever fucking reason, too, I don't know why, in the same spot, it looks like a goddamn tanning salon here. I'm washed out like a motherfucker. We know the camera shit. Well, it's extra shit today. It looks super fucking bright in here. I didn't change anything. Same goddamn lights. So who the fuck knows? But everything else is normal. It's just the way this camera's showing up. In case anybody happens to give a fuck or brings it up or annoyed. Here we go. First goddamn comment. D seized. Shout out to you, Rob. I remember comment on you. You got that fancy little fucking uh, user ID. There's no way Kevin Frazier is natty, but that's not a knock on the guy or the work he's put in. Also, dude is just a monster on guitar. I agree. There's no fucking way he is based on what I remember saying. Uh... Uh, Manuel Schizo Disc. Kevin Frazier used to play in Gut Rot. Really, uh, I don't know if I know Gut Rot, but I definitely know the name. I'd say he's pretty legit. He has some Slipknot stuff on the channel, but he's cool. So it sounds like he likes good shit plus the crappy stuff. So he's at least in the loop and's not saying what's fucking heavier than Pantera. So yeah, I can live with that. He just likes some crappy bands on the fucking side, it sounds like. But I literally know nothing about the guy. The only thing I've ever seen was what the hell I pulled up in front of you guys, which I don't even remember what the fuck it was because this. Said this video was three weeks ago, so theoretically I recorded that four weeks ago. It's usually about a week in advance by the time you guys see these videos. So I literally don't even remember what the fuck he had on there. Question, what is an album you feel nobody talks about in a band's discography that's actually one of your favorites? For example, Gore Obsessed by Campbell Corbs. Very underrated in my opinion. Uh, great fucking question. Uh, there's definitely some of those for sure. And I'll throw out the, the first to come to my mind. But I brought them up many times on this channel because people asking the uh, 90s albums by uh, King Diamond and Merciful Fate. So like Merciful Fate, like Dead Again and Nine, those are probably my two favorite uh, albums by Merciful Fate from the 90s. I like all of them, though, you know, uh, Time and the Shadows, it's going to know all that stuff. And then 90s by King Diamonds that nobody bring, brings up, probably my favorite would be <sighs> Voodoo, then probably Spiders a Lullaby, then probably The Eye, or you can even shuffle them. I mean, those three, I think they're people kind of bringing them up now, but not so, so much. But you guys do have heard me bring up those. So who the hell else is there? Because there is definitely other fucking bands that nobody brings up. You know what? It's kind of funny. Uh, they bring them up now, but they goddamn sure weren't at the fucking time when I was getting into them. Uh, Immolation, uh, Failures for Gods, and Close to a World Below. I thought, I think those fucking records, I, I absolutely love those records. It has one of my, some of my favorite death metal drum sound ever. And, um, yeah, people kind of bring them up now, but back when those were coming out, fuck no. And I thought they were amazing. Absolutely tens when they first came out. And I was there, goddammit. First time I saw Immolation was on Failures for God's tour. Uh, but everybody else, uh, anytime I brought up Immolation, ah, Dawn of Possession is all you need. So there's always that shit. So for me, them, Immolation, um, going back to Toxic Holocaust, because I know some of the earlier guys, they only kind of like the first two. Some guys only like the first album. I, I mean, I like every album, but I love fucking Overdose of Death. Uh, that's probably my second favorite album by them. First, Evil Never Dies, then an Overdose of Death. There's a few for you, goddammit, but there's definitely others. Twy Honeth Wan. J Dog's live analyzation of Frazier was fast yet interesting. Glad you like the Rob Rob because, yeah, I just brought it up there. Maybe I'll keep that in mind when somebody asks a question. Maybe I'll just do a good, quick Google search, even though I don't know how to show it on the fucking screen. Just look at it. If you're curious what the fuck I'm looking at, just look them up yourself, God damn it, and see what I'm looking at. I'll just give my assessment of whatever the fuck you guys think if I need to do a quick Google search. So glad you liked it. I'll keep, I will bear that in mind for future fucking uh, askings where I'm like, don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> this is a funny question, which I, it's kind of a pointless question, but I kind of like it because I actually it, it actually has been in the back of my mind every time I go to a show. Question, do you hold on to your old concert ticket stubs? 
I used to back in the day. I don't know if I still have them, but definitely all my teenage years, I definitely did. A lot of times I even got them signed. I'm sure I still have those ones, but I'm not sure. I have a big old bag of fucking stickers. Maybe it's in there, but I haven't looked at them for years. Do you prefer physical tickets or e-tickets? This That's a question I like. I hate this fucking e-ticket shit, man. Fucking can't stand it. So physical tickets, goddammit. That's what I fucking prefer. <laughs> Goat man. Thanks for answering my question, brah. That's... <laughs> That band sounds like it blows. Laugh out loud. I'm trying to think of what band it is. Can't remember. I want to see Brian Baxter on the show personally. Laugh out loud. Uh, he actually, we talked about it actually at the last, I think it was at Malevolent Creation. We did talk about it because, uh, did you ever see the, um, sure you did because you were watching um, Craig's stuff and stuff like that before. When Reaper, uh, I don't think Reaper's in it, just me, but me with uh, Brian and then who else in the video? Isn't it like Ben from, uh, or maybe it's Dan from uh, Regurgitation? But anyways, I did it with Brian one time on the Craig's channel. That was, I don't know what, three, four, five years ago, some shit like that. But anyways, uh, Brian uh, talks about, yeah, we should do another video or whatever. I was like, I'm up for it. I just, like, I don't have a setup like Craig, but yeah, if we can get somebody to kind of like record it or show or something, I was like, I'll, fuck yeah, I'll definitely do it. I was like, let's kind of fucking, that, I it, it wouldn't be scripted, but I was like, let's kind of like, let's not rehearse this, but like, let's at least come up with some topics to talk about. Otherwise, I don't want to just sit there and be fucking be looking at each other. You know what I mean? Uh, do you think he knows about the impressions you do of him? <laughs> well, I don't know. I wouldn't, I mean. Maybe. I think I'll, uh, I think a lot of people kind of do them, though, so, you know. But I don't know if he does. I don't know if he watches my shit or not. Uh, RJCJ Rock. Sup, j Dog. I've got two questions. One, what's your favorite Black Sabbath CD? Mine is Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Number two, Testament or Whiplash? Uh, Whiplash, easily. Uh, just the first two albums. I, I don't hate Testament. I never got too, too big in them. Um, ironically enough, the album I knew the best... I think it's what I heard. Uh, and I like some songs off it, but it gets kind of snoozy and a little bit high school you thrash to me. Is I uh, practice what you preach. I know, like, what is it? What's the first album? Um, Demonic is that the first one? The early ones. I remember hearing them like this is pretty good. They're they're just a band I never really picked up much. I seen them live once too. I think I was for the the gathering. Is that one album? It's like ninety nine or so. Never heard anything I thought was terrible. It's just kind of like commercial, like high school type thrash. What I think of, but every time we kind of put it on the first couple songs here that I'm like, no, I'm kind of enjoying this. It's pretty good. So I actually thought about maybe picking up an album here or there or give them more of a chance anyways. But, um, so Whiplash for me, because the first two Whiplash albums, I'm, I, I'm a huge fan of, especially Power and Pain. And what's my favorite Black Sabbath album? Probably as a whole master reality. Uh, but my favorite Black Sabbath song is probably Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. And a little fucking fun fact for you guys. Uh, I don't know if you ever knew, knew this. And if you could prove me wrong, Please do and send me over the audio too. But I've kind of like asked guys around, guys that collect like bootleg recordings stuff like that. As you guys know, I collect bootlegs and bootleg recordings on CDR. Black Sabbath, maybe it was up to 79, never started out. I want to say they didn't even then. I'm pretty, almost positive in the 70s, they didn't all. They never played the song Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath live. Never. Um, and the, now, now there might be sets that they did where it wasn't recorded, but I highly doubt it because there's tons and tons of uh, bootleg recorded audios, some that come out on vinyl and CD, some that have not. And um, I've looked at every single one from, you know, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath up in the track listings, and not one of them has it. The first time they ever, the only time they ever did it is when they, uh, I don't remember the exact year, but it was when they did re reunited the 90s with Ozzy and shit. They played it then. So a little bit of a fun fact, like, I thought that was, their, that's probably my favorite song on a musical. I mean, there's other songs I like a lot, too. Uh, I love N I NIB. That's a fucking great song. And uh, Fucking uh, symptom of the universe. Uh, symptom of the universe. I like a lot. I mean, they got a lot of really, really good songs. But Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath might be my all-time favorite song. But like I said, as an album as a whole, probably Master Reality. Just a little fun fact for you guys, because I didn't. I figured that out maybe a couple years ago or so. I was looking. I was like, what the fuck? Why does they never? I was like, I listen to di audio after audio. I was like, the fuck? Like, wh why don't they play Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath? I was like, they play some of the like, like let's say even on like Techno Ecstasy Tour or even Sabbath House. Like they're playing some of the. I don't want to call it, say, stinky songs, but the same kind of stinkier in comparison. I'm like, why the fuck would you guys like, like, all moving parts stand still, for example. The song's okay, but it ain't fucking no goddamn Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. That's for goddamn motherfucking sure. So I was like, why the fuck would you put that in your set list? But if I'm wrong and you can prove it provable, not, oh, I think so. I was fucking methed out of my skull back in the fucking 70s. I remember them playing goddamn Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Yeah, well, your memory fucked you. You're, it was wrong. The meth fucking hit it too hard. If you actually have evidence, like a fucking videotape or a disc, 
where it's there and they play it, I'm all motherfucking ears because I couldn't find it and I looked long and hard. JH, J Dog, any opinions on crematory from Sweden? Always been one of my personal favorites. Yeah, it's good fucking shit. The only thing I own, I think I own an LP version of it too. But the thing that I always listen to, it's gonna bust it back out. It's been a little while since I listened to it, maybe probably about two and a half, three years. Pretty sure it was Roy Fox that Narco Harmonic did a uh, double LP. Pretty sure it was him. And I think I have that as well. But he did this CD, and this is great. He just calls it Denial, which was the mini LP, I think it was called, the mini album. Yeah, mini LP. And then it's got all the demos on here, or at least the three demos. That's all I know. So this is, every, this is what I know. But this disc is fucking great. This pure sweet stuff. Definitely... Did a really, really good job, too. It's got all the fucking shit in there. So uh, this is definitely out of print. I don't know if you'd... Re repress them or not or what he's done but uh haven't seen him come to the shop for a while hells was getting them a bunch that's how i got it, it came in through hells um i'm gonna bust this out again for a fucking other spin because uh yeah it's a banger and it definitely smokes fucking all the modern death metal bands out there with the exception of pharmacist pharmacist probably my leading one if you consider that death metal band or a grind core band death grind band but as far as brutal shit, them and that one melting rot, but I'll kind of keep melting rot out since they don't have as much material. Pharmacists seems to be cranking it out. Seems to be, they're kind of making their mark where they're saying, well, hey, we're, on the, we're fucking here to stay, motherfuckers. Melting rot maybe needs to do a couple more things to say we're here to stay. Because who knows? Maybe they just put that out and they're one and done, right? But I do love that. Blood Illusions. Blood Delusions? Blood Illusions? Whichever it's called. Um, EP, full length, I guess you want to call it. I think it's marketed as a full length, but it's like 18 minutes long. Uh, fucking love that too. But so with the exception of like those two, as far as brutal stuff coming off coming out lately, I'm sure there's a one here and there. I think the crematory sends it all home on a fucking stretcher, to be honest with you. At least 95% of it. Like I said, there's probably a few other exceptions, but, but yeah. Get the goddamn crematory if you don't have it, goddamn it. Sorry if you hear any banging around shit, guys. I'm getting a little bit of house work done. My fucking uh, cousin's fixing up some shit for me. He's my he's my fix it man. So fucking ignore the goddamn noise. MB Shrome. Great video, J-Dog. Question, do you ever judge customers, good or bad, for their music taste at HHR? No, not at all. I could care less, man. I'm just happy as picking shit that when anybody orders from us. I think it's cool as fuck. To this day, it's still kind of, I mean, I'm used to it, so a little bit, I don't want to say take for granted, but definitely, um, you know, don't sit there and bear it in mind. But when I do stop to think about it, I am very, very thankful and kind of like, just kind of a little... In all, I guess, and like surprise, I'm like, wow, people like from all over the world and shit, like ordering from little old us, you know what I mean? Like, just some guys from fucking Medina. So when I stop to think about it, it's like, it is pretty fucking cool. And I am it, damn flattering to say the least. So, no, I don't judge them at all. They, they come in like, as you guys know, I'm not like a mutilation fan, Vlad Tepes, et cetera. But when they come in over and just buying like that and only that, thanks for the order, bro. I appreciate it. I'm glad you like, like, the, like our service, like our company. You know what I mean? Theoretically, you probably like some other stuff too that I like. So, uh, Lord Exis Excariot. From what Kevin has said before, he competed in professional natural bodybuilding for a few decades, but he's been on some kind of hormone therapy from his doctor for a year or so because all the bulking up and crap he's done for 20 plus years. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit of inside scoop, but I know most of you guys that follow this channel are not into bodybuilding and stuff. That's the fucking oldest trick and the biggest, um, bullshit your way out of it answer. The reason he's on TRT is because he was using anabolics. So when you take synthetic anabolics, it shuts your natural testosterone down. And that's one of the risks you run into. It's a fucking pretty much a 70% chance that uh, you're going to be on hormone replacement for the rest of your life. It's the, one of the risks you, you, if you're willing to go down that road. That's just the risk you take. You know what I mean? It's not a big deal. Cause I mean, it sounds like, Oh man, that's so fucked up. It's like, yeah, but at the same time, I mean, there's a very good chance at the age of 40 plus you're going to need it anyway. So it's like, because a lot of guys in their 40s and shit, they'll look at their levels like, oh, I'm in, I'm in the reference range. I'm like, yeah, you're the dog shit reference range. So it's like, you need it anyways. If you, look, if you want to be kicking ass, you want to be at the top reference range, the only way you're going to do that is by taking it synthetically. So, uh, yeah, he's full of shit. He's completely fucking lying. You don't you don't get that from uh, natural bodybuilding shows. The only way you kind of do, has nothing to do with bulking, is when you diet down this very, very single digit, um, very single digit body fats low with uh, no anabolics. 
your test levels crash big time because your fats are low and there's various reasons. And, uh, but generally speaking, once they start eating up, it's not because it was, it, it's not like it was shut down synthetically. It almost always comes back. Any guy that I've known tons of guys that done natural shows and shit like that. And, uh, oh, by the way, too, especially the natural pro thing, that's the biggest crock of fucking shit because I've known guys that done natural shows and especially natural pro shows. 95% of them are all taking shit. I know that for a 100% fucking fact. Matter of fact, I know of a dude that he did a natural pro show and he did, uh, cause he, but they, they, they justify it because they do no injectables. So they may not take tests or something, but he'll do it on like 150 milligrams of Anavar, which it's like, if you're all natural and you take 150 milligrams of Anavar a day, trust me, you're going to notice an enormous motherfucking difference. That's a hefty ass fucking dose. That's a fucking thousand milligrams a week. Of um, androgens per week uh, of a fucking one that works very very well. So yeah, he's he's completely lying. He's completely fucking lying. So yeah, if you like a liar, follow him. If you don't, do the fuck you want. But he's hundred percent lying. He's he's yanking your chain over there, devils. <laughs> Just got same guy saying the same thing. Tommy Gibson. From what I understand, watching his channel, Kevin was for a long time, but at least Lee has had trouble with low T and came straight out with it. So haven't heard him say anything otherwise. Yeah, that's him. Now, I'm not like totally trying to trash the guy because, again, he, he's talking to like the metal scene, which knows nothing about this topic. So he's it, it's it's very demonized even amongst you guys because you don't know anything about it. You only know what the media has told you shit, which is complete fucking horseshit. I mean, there's definitely some side effects and shit, but it's way, way, way over fucking hyped. And the health risks and shit like that. I mean, and it even gets it gets a little bit more when you get into like high up bodybuilding because the dosage just and stuff gets pretty fucking crazy. But even an average gym rat, they're not doing that like anything that crazy. And it's like you could do it in moderation and live a very very long life. So it's extremely fucking uh, demonized. So he's dancing around the subject because he knows you guys for the most most of his viewers are not going to understand. So he's doing the politically correct. All these guys, you go in the fucking bodybuilding world, fitness world. All these ass clowns, these fucking Nick Trigillis, these fucking Seth Barosis, these Greg Doucettes, uh Derek and more plates, they're all playing that fucking card. Oh, I'm just on TRT, and that's, no, dude, you're full of fucking shit. The TRT line is the oldest fucking trick in the book for the last five years. Everybody in the know knows it. Every single person. You ask anybody in this world that's in the know, they'll tell you, yeah, no, that's just, that's the, that's the cop-out bullshit. I'm trying to think of a good analogy of what you guys would all know. That everybody knows, like, that's the biggest fucking dog hate, dog ate my homework excuse I've ever heard. On an hotel records, he's back in the comments, goddamn old Ralph. In Hume Rules, Overlook Band, I agree, that first in Hume record is fucking awesome. If you don't know that one, Devils, there's another one that smokes fucking 95% of the shit coming out today. It's a fucking banger, highly recommend it. Guy asking a question that I completely can't even understand, so I'm not even gonna read it off. Jones asking top theoretical stage shows. I think I kind of answered that though. Pretty much King Diamond and Ali Ghoul after that. I'm pretty sure I answered that question at the time. <laughs> Look at this one, the Devils. We've got another one. He's back. I thought I was done. Pretty sure I fucking answered all this goddamn word. I'd say I finalized it. Thrasher 1293. Shitty Pantera question mark. Bruh, how are Pantera not real metal? What the fuck? Do I even need to answer this one again, Devils? I mean, do I really? Go listen to Crematory, goddamn it. Then you'll know what the fuck I'm talking about. I didn't say Pantera's not real metal. I said it's commercialized fucking metal. That I'm not into it. And all the canoes. What's heavier than Pantera? Fucking Crematory. This is goddamn heavier than Pantera. And I'm literally over a thousand discs behind me, heavier than Pantera. That's the goddamn problem I have. It's just canoes like that. What's heavier than Pantera? Just ignorant dumb fucks. But if you like them, that's fine. I'm just saying, like, come on, man. It's not that fucking hard to figure out. James Kwan, in my honest opinion, fucking tank top doesn't belong to genuine extreme metal, period. I kind of agree, well, to an extent. 
Just wear a plain black t-shirt or long sleeve already, unless you're at the gym, busy working out, god damn it. My standpoint is, uh, this one guy replied to him, what do you say? Go around. I mean, if you're jacked, you can, but if you're a stick, nah, in my opinion. That's my, that's my opinion in general. Like, I don't know. Like, I rarely wear tank tops and stuff. When I do, it's because it's hot as fuck out. And actually, we're getting there, so I might be having some on here actually coming up soon. Because today was getting pretty fucking scorchers hot. And I kind of like, I don't want to say I'm some sweating pig all day, but I kind of do sweat pretty easily, especially when I train. That literally my clothes, if I'm wearing like a t-shirt, they're, they're drenched. Like, I can literally wring them out, especially after the gym. So it gets to the point where it's uncomfortable. It's like, I guess I got to bust out a tank top, which I hate fucking wearing. But... It's like, if you're going to wear them, you got to have some fucking muscle on you. You get these fucking Pee Wee Hermans on. It's like, what are you doing? Like, I would have never, like, when I first started working out first, second, third year and shit, I would have never even considered it. I'm like, I don't, I have no business wearing one. But it's funny is like the guys that are super fucking jacked, and I'm not saying I fit in that category, but more jacked than the average bear. Um, They get, you, and I know because I get this when I go out, you almost get like, I don't want to say scrutinized, but you get asked backhanded stupid questions or undertow comments like steroids or fucking uh how much you bench bro or uh just just kind of like just just uh degrading comments in a sense but they're saying it like like kind of in a playful way so that way you, you don't fucking go up and hit them not that i would because i don't really care what anybody thinks or says or they can say what the fuck they want meatheads you said stare whatever they decide because i don't care but it's like it's funny like but if a guy with a big fucking beer, be beer belly and fucking Pee Wee Herman arms and zero fucking chest other than fucking titties wears a tank top that's cutting his lawn, it's completely okay. I'm like, I, this guy looks deplorable. Like, why the fuck is he even wearing that? You know what I mean? Like, you'd almost think they would get called out. Like, hey, fat boy, put a shirt on, something like that. But it's not. And I like, I never thought about this until it started happening to me. I'm like, why is like, it's like almost like I'm being criticized when you go out. But, yeah, you get some fucking stick boy fucking doing it or some fat ass. It's just like, yeah, all good in the fucking hood. It's like, well, what, what the fuck? Like, because me in my teenage years, before I ever started training, I just I started training when I was 21, 22, somewhere there. Just right around the end of 21. And uh, it's just in my mind, prior to that, ever touching weight, I'm like, you wear a tank top because you're fucking jacked. That's it. You don't, you don't, you don't put one on unless you, <laughs> unless you are. You know what I mean? I just thought that was kind of like common fucking knowledge, but apparently it's not. So... Whatever, what the fuck do I know, right? So anyways, that's it for this one, Devils. Comments, questions, concerns, you know what the fucking do. Leave it in the goddamn comments, hit the subs, and start telling your nannies and fucking grammies and mamas and papas and aunties and sisties and all things. I want to get these goddamn views at a 1,000 plus in the first fucking 24 hours. We're getting close. I'm definitely in the 600s almost every single time with like one exception a month, basically. I'm always at 600 in the 24s, and most of them are getting either 700 or some even a thousand at first. Yeah, probably about three a week in a thousand, a thousand the first twenty four hours. But I want to get every fucking video at a thousand views um, within the first twenty four hours of post. So tell all your fucking buddies and bra bras and maybe they'll lose lose some fucking metal. Hear why Pantera fucking sucks dick and all the fucking rest because I want that goddamn thing up to a thousand. That's not a tall goddamn order. That's asking for another three fifty views or so in, uh, in twenty four hours. So. Let them know out there, goddammit. Questions, comments. Yeah, tell them to put their goddamn questions there, too. Maybe we'll get some fucking new ones in there, some goodies, and, well, a fucking field day on over here, right? Let me know, goddammit. Put it in there. I'll see you in the next one. Later, goddammit.